creativity and wisdom that lead us to the appropriate expression of harmonic balance. May we move forward with imagination, inspiration, integrity to align ourselves to the melodic order requisite for healing. May our intention always be focused toward the highest purposes of a space and of those who occupy it. This was the part where our executive producers were going to come up and say some words. And um, sadly, they cannot be here tonight. Uh, he was taken ill and is in the hospital. And so um, we feel very sad about that. We certainly, um, he is there here in spirit. Uh, she is responsible for this incredible food. If you've not indulged, do that. Uh, she did a lot of research and a lot of heart went into this food, but they are not able to, to be here. I think that one of the things that, um, for me, uh, with this project is that um, this is a, ra um, it, uh, on one hand, this is a radical diversion from what I normally do as a feng shui consultant, and yet it's a perfect step for me. Um, I uh, have been doing feng shui for over 20 years, as many of you know here, and um, but what some of you know, but many of you don't know, is prior to that I was a musician, and yeah, and uh, played the keyboard, the uh, piano for various things, and um, you know, as life has it, I moved on, and um, moved away from it and um, had to say it didn't fill my heart and, and for whatever reason, it just, it just didn't. And so um, I took up uh, feng shui with, a, with gusto and uh, studied with a man named Professor Thomas Lin Yun who has since passed away. So um, I tell you his name because this is gonna factor into our combined stories. So, Jeff, why don't you tell, um, why don't you tell them your story? Okay. Hey, well, welcome, everybody. So, um, I'm a, uh, uh, I've been a professional keyboard player, session musician uh, for over 30 years. And I started out playing on a, uh, many pop records uh, became, and eventually became a ranger and a producer. And uh, it was about, uh, it was in my early 90s, I started going through a, a, a let's say, a dark night of the soul, and I had to do a lot of work on myself. And so I began looking into doing, um, doing a lot of spiritual work, uh, looking at my life, looking at uh, the world that I created for myself. And uh, interesting left part of the journey was uh, getting interested in Feng Shui. And I was just uh, you know, reading a lot of books and uh, very interested in how it could be implemented. And uh, I was, uh, for about 15 years, I was at a recording studio in New York called The Power Station, where I worked on many, many records uh, from Cindy Lauper, Billy Joel, um, uh, Eric Clapton, and worked with uh, all the meatloaf as well. And uh, the, the studio, the music business, took a, took a huge nosedive in the, uh, uh, it, was, it was around oh, 1995. And the studio went bankrupt. And a uh, new owner came in. And on, in the transition, uh, I, I suggested to him, you know, with, with the transition of owners, I said, you ought to get somebody to clear the space. There was a lot of negative energy as, it, as the old owner went out, the new one came in. And I'd been reading about Feng Shui and trying some things at my, my home. And I suggested the manager they should look into it. So she said, oh, okay, sure, I'll, I'll check it out. 
So interestingly enough, she uh, contacted uh, Professor Lynn Young, and, uh, and his organization was going to send someone over to the studio, uh, one, of, one of his students, we thought, to work, uh, work at the studio and, and clear the space and, uh, and, and, do, do, uh, and do whatever they needed in order to, to work with the old, uh, the old energies there. So uh, when it came time for somebody to come over, they called ahead and they said, well, you know, we've looked at the studio online, we've seen what it is, it's such an important place, we think that the professor should come and work on this. So he came with his full contingent. They were, this was in New York, he was uh, speaking at the UN, and the timing was just incredible. So he came to the studio, uh, cleared the space, and did a, it was, again, my, my first experience with a, with a real master to see the, uh, the, the power of this work. And so, fast forward, uh, 25 years, I think. <laughs> and uh, uh, Carol and I were introduced by a mutual friend of ours. And this is when we learned that we both had had contact with uh, the professor. And uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it takes a village to do something like this. And um, <clears throat> I, uh, three, year, three and a half years ago now, decided to take a, uh, a coach, a business coach, who uh, take up with her and study with her, and she is in Tucson. And so uh, while I was there, I met uh, a woman named Lisa Zimmerman. And Lisa and I um, are night and day and yin and yang, and I loved her. And so the very first night we spent together in our hotel room, I'm telling her my story about I used to do music, and she goes, you need to talk to my friend Jeff Bova. And I went, uh-huh. And so <laughs> she get, picks up her phone, hands it to me, and leaves the room. And I have Jeff Bova on the phone. And so we bumbled our way through a, an inane conversation about, uh-huh, you like feng shui, good. You used to do music, good, uh-huh. And where she left. She left the room. So, um, but the thing that was interesting about it is she really saw that vision. She's also an astrologer. And so she's pulling out charts and going, this is it, this is the time, you two, this is aligned with that, and this means this, and you can work together. And so it took us over a year. It's actually a year before we actually met. And I was out in California studying with Professor Lin, and I went down to um, LA and met Jeff. And, and, I, and I think that was when we first, first both went, there's something to be said about this. In the interim, what had to happen is I had to write a book called Conversations with Your Home because that was a pivotal book for me because I turned my attention uh, toward the space. I mean, it seems silly that, of course, but it, it was all about the space. And it was about looking, having a conversation with the space, that ongoing conversation, whether it's retail, uh, it, residential, retail, residential, or commercial, there's a, there's a conversation that needs to happen. And how you can facilitate and help that all the better. And, and the, whatever feng shui or blessing or, or balancing you're doing, if the house is behind you, it's so much more powerful. So I knew that if we were gonna work together, this had to be music for the space, which is different. It's a different concept. And so our first CD was um, Healing Your Home. And uh, that has now been picked up by a record label. And so our second CD now is um, this one called The Bridge Home. So do you want to tell me about it? Yeah. Uh, also, I mentioned the, the label. My very first meditation tape I ever got was, uh, was a, uh, I forget exactly who it was, but it was on the label Sounds True. And that's saying, oh, that's the place to go to to get the great meditation tapes. And uh, so there was this part of me as I began to explore musically outside of the pop, the pop world, uh, I said, well, if you're gonna find a place to do this kind of music, that's, that's the place to be. Just it's, it's so powerful and that's where the voice and where you can connect with people of that consciousness. And, uh, and so this was a, a dream come true that came out of really almost uh, just the blue. Yeah, the blue. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, um, like I say, it takes a village, and we have a few people we'd like to acknowledge, and then we're going to talk to you about the structure of this music. So I mentioned my friend Lisa Zimmerman, who 
also could not be here tonight. She was within inches of being here and um, could not make it. So we wish her well, and she's in our hearts. Yeah. We'd also really like to, to thank Tom Hyder, who has uh, been our, let's say, support. He has been there to, uh, to mirror everything back to us that we were trying to do and to, to really how we were going to express this and our exploration of that. And he helped, helped ground us in that. And lots of gratitude to Tom for that. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge um, somebody in the room who actually designed our cover, which is Jess Cripps. And so, Jess, you want to sweep your hand? Stand up? Yeah. Jess is a, a lovely graphic, graphic designer, and um, I've used her for many things. And she put our artwork together. And uh, when, you, when you hear the CD, we had a wonderful vocalist, violinist from LA uh, perform on it. Uh, one of the changes we made one of the additions we made in this, this CD was uh, to, to add voice to it. We felt that was for this purpose was going to be an integral part of, uh, of working with the energy. And uh, her name is Anya Fiore. And she plays with a very interesting band out of LA called the Mass Ensemble. And it's a performance art group that uh, they build their own instruments. They're all like sculptures. And one of them is a thing called an earth harp, where they build the harp into the structure of the building. And they're, they're big uh, tensile cables, and they use uh, rosin with gloves to play, the, uh, to play the strings in the buildings. The whole room becomes the instrument. And she's the violinist and the vocalist with them, and brings us an incredible energy. And you'll hear in the music what she, what she brought. Uh, she was so moved by the experience of what we were trying to do here. At the end of the last piece, when we finished working, she literally just broke down into, into tears. She was she couldn't contain it. It was so much to hold for her, but she uh, she knew the you know the power the power of what we were trying to do here. I also wanted to thank the no less than five people, Cheryl Larson being one of them, who uh, several months ago, about six eight months ago, said, "Oh, you guys ought to do music for hospice space." We went, "Yeah, whatever." And but you know, as with something, when somebody when you hear it from more than one person, it keeps coming at you and coming at you, and, you know, this, so I mentioned it to Jeff, and there was an instant moment when we, when we realized that was our next, our next project. Yeah, and Carol had been, also, you've been working with, with a hospital. Yes, I have. Yeah, and it was like, you know, their, their need, we, we felt there's a need here on, on all these levels, and the way we're working with the music uh, for the space, as opposed to uh, directly for the occupants of the space, felt that would be a really important thing to bring in some way. Yeah. And then, of course, we want to acknowledge our executive producers, Lainey and, and Dan Donoff, who cannot be here. Um, they were inspirational, um, supportive, uh, generous, fun, and uh, we had um, some fabulous meetings with them, some via Skype. It's Jeff was not here. and some in person, and we're in, in, totally indebted to them for helping make this project come alive so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Very grateful for what, what they were able to do to allow this to happen. Yeah. So we want to, you got a handout. <laughs> so we want to talk a, a little bit about the structure of this um, piece. There's a, there's a structure in feng shui called the five Chinese elements, and um, this is a structure that's older than dirt. I mean, it's, uh, it goes way back um, beyond, before feng shui really had um, emerged as, as a, a belief or an ideology of any sort. And, and the, uh, many of you here in this audience know um, about the five elements, but just as a quick reminder, it's about a process. The five elements take you through a process. Generally, you start with water, but that doesn't always have to happen. And, and from water emanates an idea, um, um, some kind of a thought form. And then you move to wood, which is where the idea starts to uh, take form. Then you move to fire, where the idea is expansive and, and um, uh, alive. And then you go to earth, which means it's starting to um, uh, mature. It's mature, the whole concept. 
and then metal, which is the ending, and it, and it brings it to a, a close until you start with water all over again. And so when we did Healing Your Home, we did that in that order. Water was the first one. Those of you who have that CD, water is the first element that comes along, and that was translated um, into um, harmonics. And so um, in this one, Jeff also used, he followed the, um, the elements, but in a different sequence. This one, because it is about um, a, a, a completion and an ending, we actually started with wood. And so the very last track is water, which is all about um, we're going back to that idea, going back to the beginning, it's the beginning and the end. And um, so uh, Jeff can talk to you about the progression of this, but I wanted to draw your attention to the little boxes on, the, on, the, on your handout because it describes the elements and um, what's in the parentheses is sort of the yin and the yang of it. Um, so if you look at, at um, fire, the candle is the soft fire, but a volcano is a pretty explosive fire. In the bridge home, we used all of the soft descriptors to drive the project and to drive his, in, his intention. Um, there, I also want to draw your attention to the keys. There is a way to determine the, the, the key based on um, the trigrams that are related to each of the elements of the Bagua, each of the areas of the Bagua. And as a result, he used the, the keys related to each of these elements. So, you know, behind the scenes are all of the, uh, the um, factors that are needed to underscore what this, what this CD is about. So with that, you know, as, as a composer, where you have just a wide open palette, you know, how are you supposed to work with, uh, with the key? That's really the place where we're starting toning, and we're talking about sound healing and working in that realm by toning and having uh, everything aligned to that tone to come into alignment with it that was that's the initial principle of why we would tone in a particular key uh, the other part of it though is that uh, I also want to bring an aesthetic experience for anybody listening to the music uh, and in this environment because we don't know who's going to be hearing it and it's going to be uh, people from all ranges all ages and uh, different generations in terms of, of music and we're not trying one thing I'm really we're really careful about is we're not trying to do what a music therapist would do what we're trying to do is again support the space in a way that we can enhance what the music therapist is doing by bringing uh, for instance music that would be say for instance very uh, close to the heart of, of a person in a transitional phase so we want them to be able to do what they need to do in that realm as they do it but for us again to, to remember, and that what really helped me was to say, okay, we're supporting the space, the container, in order for to facilitate whatever wants to happen here. Uh, we we want to be able to support connection. We want to be able to support uh, communication. We want to be able to support the opening of hearts so that uh, the unsaid can be said, the never before spoken can be spoken in these in in that kind of a transitional situation. And if we talk about our own life transitions, again, it's about of what will allow us to feel and be in feel of that of the uh, of the space and in feel with ourselves that we can better connect with that part of ourselves that wants to uh, uh, let go and 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 trans transition into the new that whatever is being presented to us. Um, now, there were several things. So starting from the root, I'll give you sort of an idea of, of where where I needed to go. I had the keys. And that was, again, a great place to start. We can begin toning from there, setting up the vibration. And then we need to look at, well, how about tempos? What kind of a uh, tempo rhythm wants to happen or no rhythm wants to happen in terms of, uh, of bringing someone, allowing them to relax into a, a, a peaceful state and, uh, and, and openness? So one of the methods, and it's, it's very mathematical, but it all aligns with the sort of the perfection of the universe, is that for each key, each tone, there's a frequency, and everything's built around frequencies, including rhythm. So the tempos were derived by taking the actual key and subdividing it down to a tempo that was a slow enough tempo in a relaxed state, but it was a, a division of the, uh, of the actual uh, frequency of the key. 
So for instance, if, uh, if, uh, if it was 220 hertz, C was the uh, primary key, I, could, I, I was able, able to choose 110 BPM or 55 BPM. In a case like that, I would choose 55 BPM. It was below 60 and again, allowing, allowing again a slower vibration. So that's technically underneath what was driving uh, a place to start because again, it's, uh, it's all subjective. What feels to me in the moment like a, uh, the appropriate slow tempo may not necessarily be in alignment with where somebody may be in, 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 other, in their other different states of, uh, of their emotions and in their bodies. So uh, I was relying on the key and using some, again, a, a derivation of that in order to give me that information and needed to trust that that was uh, the way to move, the way to move through this. Um, and also, the, Carol's descriptors, uh, for instance, if you look at, uh, at wood, you know, flowers as opposed to trees. There's a, there's a way that music, and I've thought of this in a way of like a music soundtrack. You know, what does music for flower sounds like as opposed to trees? Trees feel so fully grounded and immense in, in, in a certain way and in, in a certain kind of power. But in a transitional situation, that may not necessarily be right. So again, taking the... Uh, uh, the other approach with flowers, then it, it lightens up the energy, lightens up the music. It, it, the choice of rhythms and instruments all were influenced by that. And, uh, and then we come to, uh, it was a really interesting decision. Um, in Healing Your Home, each piece, each element was nine minutes long. And that was based on, again, the Feng Shui numbers of nine. nine. So, so that was a, a a, a very simple solution to how long the pieces should be. So for this, we felt there was something bigger happening here that needed to be looked at. And um, I'm going to just read you a, a quote of uh, Adolf Zeissing, who I'm not familiar with, 1854. He wrote, there's a universal law in which is contained the ground principle of all formative striving for beauty and completeness in the realms of both nature and art, and which permeates as a paramount spiritual ideal, all structures, forms, proportions, whether cosmic or individual, organic or inorganic, acoustic or optical, which finds its fullest realization, however, in the human form. And that's the golden mean. So with, with Tom's help, he, uh, he got the equation for running the golden mean, and we knew we were working with five elements. If they were nine minutes long, they would have added up to 63 minute piece of music. We applied the golden mean to it and we came up with the lengths of the piece to start with wood being the shortest and again all in proportion to the 63 minutes of 3 minutes and 52 seconds. And then we expand on fire which became 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Earth 10 minutes and 6 seconds. Metal 16 minutes and 21 seconds and finally water 26 minutes and 26 seconds to add up to that. So we felt and just intuitively felt that somehow this unfoldment of the elements and that time we spent attuning them and then opening up finally the water to allow them to make that, they're, they're to uh, say encourage that, that move through and that expansion and that transition was somehow an important piece here. So we, uh, again, uh, using that as our basis, created all the pieces in, the, in these particular lanes. We also, he also, uh, each of the elements has a sound to it. And you'll see it's on here. There's a shh and a he, and there's an om. And uh, those have all been interlaid in each of the elements as we go through. You, I mean, they're nuanced, so you won't just hear a shh. <laughs> but it's there. It's underneath it all. And uh, when we're talking about intentional music, uh, in addition to just using my, my own composer intuition as to what feels good, what, what melodies work, what harmonies work within the context of, of this structure. Um, there was also, in terms of creating the actual sounds we're using, uh, there, there are a number of different sound processing techniques I use. And one of them was a very interesting one I'd like to share, is there's a program called Metasynth, where you take a photograph, you run the sound through it, and it filters in real time from the left side of the photo to the right by pixel what, uh, what harmonics and tones come through at that given point as it scans the photo. So I took some, uh, had some pictures of some bridges 
since it felt very, very appropriate. It's a project of beautiful bridges that would arch. And as you arch through the frequencies from low frequencies to high, it would change the, the, uh, the way the, uh, the sound would scan. And I had uh, one develop a rhythm because it was a, a bunch of arches across a large river. And as you got to each arch, light was shining through the arches. And that would be the, the points where you would hear the most sound. It would, it would darken between the arches. And when you got to the opening in it, it would open. So uh, it's, it sounds just like ambient sound. But a lot of the sound you hear in the background is actually these sounds. Like, say, for instance, water, I've got a, a piece of, uh, of ocean sound. And I took that and looped it, but I ran it through the filter. So it doesn't sound like ocean, but you'll just hear this, this oscillating uh, ambience going in the background. So again, it's all about, you know, again, through intention, trying to embed uh, different aspects of, uh, of how I might you know, perceive water. We could, and, and again, when we hear ocean, it's very, it's very relaxing to us. And we do use some real uh, sounds in it as well. So you have a mix of that and then then also the digital processing of some of it too to uh, give you a different experience. And, and, it's, uh, and what we found is it's got so, uh, such a bigger picture to it. So it, it isn't just about a hospice and palliative care uh, space. It's really about a space that's holding uh, its energy for any kind of transition, a transition in life, a transition out of a marriage, into a marriage, out of a job, to another space. Um, so it, it showed us that it was bigger than what we thought, which, um, and you, you know, you're still, you're, the bridge is home, the bridge is going to home, to where, it, you know, whatever that might mean and whatever context that needs to be taken. Yeah. So as we were planning this with our producer, our executive producers, um, one of her loves is cats. And uh, anybody who knows me also knows I'm a cat person. And so Lainey's uh, charity, favorite charity is Feline Rescue. And so this evening is a fundraiser for them. And uh, if you just donate anything, um, you will get a, a, your own CD to use. And you know, I think that taking it home and letting your home embrace it. I mean, everybody, I mean, we do this healing your home CD and people go and play it in their car. Well, that's okay. You can do that. But, you know, it's real intention is to, uh, to, is to work with your space. That's what it wants to do is work with the walls of your space and as does the bridge home. So our hope is that you will take a CD home and um, let your, and, and give a gift to the space that you, uh, that you live in and create in. Or in this case, uh, somebody who needs, who's really making a life transition. All right, so um, we have lots of five element food. Yes, so by all means, please do. I also want to give a shout out to the um, servers here tonight. Um, these are all students of mine. Um, either there, some of them are master students, and some of them are just starting, uh, kind of going through the, the the certification program. And my dear associate Lisa Janice is heading up the team back there. So uh, thanks to all of you for your for your generosity and being here. And thank you all of you. Thank you so much for coming and enjoying this moment with us. It's a special moment. And thank you so much. So please stay around. We'll turn the music up again and Absolutely. enjoy some food. And happy to chat with any of you. Have any questions or just like to connect? Thank you.